In this introduction video, I'm going to cover the plate and some of the functionality it provides. By default, when a new drawing is created, the plate definition dialog opens, with several parameters starting with the width, the height, and the thickness. The dimensions of the plate can be set to the size of the material you plan to cut, the size of your machine, or they can be set to define the boundaries of the design to make it easier to draw. The origin coordinates define the position of the lower left corner of the plate and can be changed to move the plate around the workspace. Margin defines a border around the inside edge of the plate. And when it's used, it will be shown as a dotted red line inside the plate boundaries. Surface at top and surface at bottom are typically set based on the most important surface in your design. For 3D engraved cuts, the top surface will be the most important surface, but when you're cutting out parts, the bottom will be the more important surface. Wrap plate is a specialty function used with meshes, and I'll cover that in a future video. So with these parameters defined, when I hit OK, I now see that there's a red reference rectangle created in my workspace with the same dimensions. Now when I create contours in the workspace, the plate doesn't really affect them. It's there to help me make sure I get them positioned the way I want them to. The plate becomes important when I start to nest these parts that I've created. So I'm going to start by selecting these parts and moving them outside the plate boundaries. And then with them selected, I'm going to activate the nesting tool. The nesting tool allows me to efficiently nest these parts within the plate boundary I've defined. And this selector panel down here allows me to choose which corner I want to nest into. So I've selected the lower left-hand corner. I'm going to hit Apply. You can see that these parts are now efficiently nested together in that lower left-hand corner. Another important feature of the nesting tool, I'm going to delete the parts I just nested and reselect the originals, activate the nesting tool again, is the remnant sheet creator. So if I enable the Create Remnant option and do the exact same nesting operation, you'll see that the parts are again nested in the lower left-hand corner, but there's also a contour created around the nested parts, the size of the plate dimension. And what this does is with this selected, I can activate the Create Plate from Selected Contour tool. And now the plate has been redefined to the remnant sheet created by cutting out the nested parts. This can be helpful when nesting multiple batches of jobs back to back for maximum material usage. Another important thing to note about this, this plate definition only applies to this layer. If I go and create a new layer, and navigate to that layer, the plate is defined with the original definition parameters. If at any point you want to turn off the plate display, you can do so by going to Setup, Preferences, View Setup, and in the standard items, disabling the plate. Typically you'll want the plate to be displayed, but you can turn it off to review tool paths or contours. Plate definition is not required for a new drawing. If I open a new drawing and then hit cancel on the plate definition dialog, I now have a new drawing without the plate defined. It's a bit more difficult to keep track of my position as I move around the workspace, but I can still use the rulers to keep track of my position. That's the plate definition in route. Try defining your own plate and I'll see you in the next video.